I've done the nice perimeter. So now it's almost impossible, hopefully, for George to mess this one up. Are we going to fit through? Absolutely beautiful, mate, that. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Wallop. 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 Keep the tension on it, otherwise there's no point. What a wally. How can it be that difficult? Welcome back to Soul Fuel. We're here today to add on to an existing system. The customer's currently got six integrated panels up here. We're going to be adding a further six on the other side with in phase microinverters. We're coupling that with a Tesla Powerwall 2. Make sure you stay till the end to see how cool the Powerwall 2 really is. So, what we're, the plan is, is we've already got the electrical sort of consumer unit here. There's a massive void under here. We're fitting a Tesla Powerwall, so we've got to find somewhere for the gateway door here to house the gateway and we've got some end phase micros going on the roof so the envoy can go in here as well and we've also got a route where Rob is now tucked away in his favourite place under the stairs to get outside to where the power is going to be mounted around the corner. I can't believe it. You've lost a bit through the bag it's in there. It's off. What a wally. <sighs> Let's cut that out in a bit. So nothing. Rob's under here. We've got to cut a void under the stairs so that we can get that a bit higher. The aim is we'll come out probably about this height here, but then clip it nice and neatly all the way around here to the battery. So the Tesla power wall's going here. It's going to go on this wall just behind this fence, so it's tucked out of the way. We've also got a little bit of shelter up here as well, which is which is nice. All right, we're coming through. How was that? Beautiful, Rob. <laughs> Absolutely beautiful, mate, that. Oh, yeah. How can it be that difficult? George? Yeah? You pushing it in? Yeah. All the way? Yeah, go on, hang on. Right, let me push it back to you, yeah? That's it. How's that? Yeah, I got it, yeah. Wallop. Highland Springs, if you want to sponsor. Oh, that's beautiful. I feel so odd when you're just pointing it at me and there's nothing going on. Can you hold this push back? No. Why? Oh, I've done it for you. I really don't need you to hold this push back. Look how awkward this is. These are the roof faces where we're planning to install some extra panels. Plan is, see this is our south facing side. So we're gonna try and squeeze as many on here as we can. At the moment we've priced in for six. Now that we're up here, looking at, we'll probably fit a couple more on here. So, you know, if it comes to what you can say to the customer, would you like an extra couple whilst we're up here? Four to five on this face. And then if he wants to, we can sort of decide to fill this face up as well. I'm a little bit nervous about cutting this. Because with the multi-tool, it's, it's, A, it's really super thick. And be remote, it's quite hard to. Go on. Right, stop. Stop pulling it. Stop. Yeah, but look, you've got way more than three metres there. You're not going through the gate, you're going through there. Keep the tension on it. Just keep the tension on it. Otherwise, there's no point. I've done the nice perimeter. So now it's almost impossible, hopefully, for George to mess this one up. So George can finish it off now. Beautiful. <laughs> so we're going to dip. We're going to disappear to another job. Leave these guys to crack on. And uh, hopefully be back tomorrow. <laughs> In the van. <laughs> oh, it's terrible. Very pleased with how the cable route's gone. Thought that was going to be a bit more of a nightmare than it's turned out to be, so that's good. Um, so hopefully today the guys are going to get the, all of the Tesla gear mounted. So it's the gateway and the power wall. We'll have the, the cable run from A to B, from gateway to power wall, comms. Um, so in an idea world, it'd be ready for sort of commissioning and switching on tomorrow. Please, may I have a large whisker box, 20 mil earth nut, 25 mil contractors pack copex. And I have 15 meters of three core, six mil SWA. Can I get some of the little screwing bases? 40 amp. Um, uh, rotary isolator. I believe that's it, thank you. No worries, not good luck, mate. Look, I've got solar rivalry going on in there. Look, who's this? 
happens. Yes. You've got them frames. You don't want to take one of them frames. You show him. This is what makes a good wholesaler. Free. Thank you, sir. Nice. Thanks and you. Have a lovely day. And you. So we've been up there, we've measured. We originally designed for six panels, but now that we're up there, we can actually squeeze a couple more on, but it does mean it won't be sort of symmetrical, so it won't, it won't look as nice. So we just spoke with the customer to say, that, would you rather have more panels or keep it looking nice? And he's decided to keep it looking sort of smarter. So sticking with the six and away we go. So hopefully, oh, that cable has now been run from here. So we've got a whisker box in here for where the cables come through. Yeah, then runs around here. Well, it's just in there, look. Oh my God, I stuck. Oh, there you go. Are we gonna fit through? Yeah. What up? Last she blows. You ready, Robo? Yeah, I'm on it. Three, two, one, go. Yeah. That was it, wasn't it? It's beautiful. That was oh. easier. Better than last time. Yeah, so basically what I've done, the customer's having six panels in total. Um, so three either side. So we're basically just mirroring this side that I'm working on now um, to this side here. You've got two screw holes um, in the bracket here. So you take one tile out where you're going to screw the bracket to the rafter. Um, so you've got a spare tile there. Um, then what you do, you use these rubber mats just as extra protection because um, obviously there's going to be some weight on there from the panels. As you can see here, um, nice and flush with the other tiles. You just mount your rail onto the brackets, making sure they're nice and level uh, running the whole way up. Um, and then once they're on, you're ready for the panels. This is an end phase microinverter. Um, essentially what this does, um, it makes each panel its own individual smart panel, you could say. It will ensure that the system isn't as strong as its weakest link. Any shading issues, because um, we've got a few trees around here, say one panel gets covered in shade, um, it wouldn't affect the rest of the system, only that panel will drop down. What you're also able to do with these clever systems, um, it means you can actually monitor each individual panel to see um, what power it is actually generating. How you basically mount these to the rail, very simple, just a long screw. Um, just place it on top of the rail like this, put your screw through, and that's nice. It's right there. So you put each microinverter under each panel. Then what will happen, you've got your two DC cables, male and female, that come out of the panel and then they both plug into these two ports here. And then you've got your AC plug here, which is how all each microinverter links together. Oh, lovely. So this is a clip that you hook over the mesh to obviously keep it nice and tight on there. What you'll find, a majority of companies do, they'll actually screw into the frame of the panel here. Um, and that actually avoids the warranty. So obviously with a lot of panels, you get about a 25 year warranty. So obviously you wanna, you know, keep that active. The frame here on the panel has a little lip on the underside. This hook here just hooks over like that. And then what you do, you just push that little washer kind of thing there. Nice and tight there, as you can see, along the frame of the panel. Fast forward a week, we're back at the job. Let me show you what we've done. Luckily, there's only six panels on the existing. We've been able to sort of connect into that, which means we can just take a cable from the existing panels over there, two new panels, and away we go. We've got end phase microinverters behind each one and bird mesh all the way around. So we've got our power wall here outside. We've got our rotary isolator here. Comms cable comes in as well from below. There she is. This is where we've got a gateway. So this is the brains of the system. If you want to know a little bit more about what this actually does, then watch our other video on the Tesla install. But basically, this is the brains. So the power comes into it, comes through as cartridge fuse. Normal operation, just flows straight back through to the consumer unit that supplies the rest of the house. In the event of a power cut, there's a nice big switch in here that changes from 
grid power and takes from the battery power. And this is the kit that allows it to do it. As promised at the start of the video, I'm gonna show you what would happen in the event of a power cut with the Tesla Powerwall. So in order to simulate a power cut, I'm gonna pull this main cartridge fuse here that supplies the rest of the home. We've got a radio plugged in. It's plugged in at the socket over here without a battery in it, so we're running off mains only. Let's see what, see what happens. Keeping the music on. Beautiful. And on that note, if you're interested in getting solar or a power wall, please see the link in the description below and one of the team will get back to you. And if you want to see some more solar fuel, there'll be a couple of videos pop up here to have a watch.